Hey everybody, Brett from Astartes Gaming here, back with another episode of our Crusader Kings 2 Game of Thrones mod Let's Play. So, we are still kind of doing the same thing we've been doing for the last few episodes, in that we are trying to get a, basically get a hold of uh, any you know provinces currently still held by the Boltons. And so, High Point will of course be next, we are working on the claim right now. Um, if we don't have that claim in time, we will go after Seal Shore, which it might be worth going for that first anyways, but uh, those are our two targets. We have everything out to the west here, um, short of Pine's End actually, but we can't declare war on Pine's End um, as we discovered in the last episode because uh, it turns out that this guy's married to our sister, so because of that marriage tie, we actually can't declare war on him. So. We're just going to have to kind of let that one be. I may actually be able to turn this into an alliance. Um, so that might be worth doing, but we'll kind of think about that. Anywho, I guess we may as well just jump in, so let's get the clock rolling. While I'm doing that, I'd just like to remind you guys to hit that like button if you're enjoying the series thus far and you'd like to see more Crusader Kings 2. And don't forget to subscribe as well. It's the best way to help the channel grow. And the best way to follow along with this playthrough as it continues. So this is... My which daughter is that? Let's see. I believe she is the middle daughter. 18, 19, 27. Yeah, so she's the middle daughter. We mar we married her to Rorge Faring, who is a Kingslander. Hipster Kingslander. And uh, apparently they had a daughter already. So her name will be Arana Raventree, and let's see if she's any good. Um She's sickly, so not really. We are going to get some free piety here, so that's nice. I was really hoping that she would get her father's strong trait, but no such luck. We'll keep an eye on her, though, and see if she ends up being a good character. Hmm, it looks like the Aztecan rulers are starting to usurp more and more of the Westerlands. That's funny. Okay. So how's my council looking? How did you end up in that spot? I don't recall putting him there. Oh, right, right. We had to replace the previous Master at Arms, and we had to choose between this guy and our wife. And because we were trying to have a son, I figured that keeping her home rather than having her lead armies was probably the best idea. But once she gets over, I think it's 45 is where they cut that off and you can't have children any further. Um, we may as well have her lead the armies because she's the better character to do it. Okay. So, I guess let's just get this rolling again. I don't know, we're hitting another one of those like kind of kind of lulls that happen in this game sometimes. And so I'm going to need to find somewhere to basically start picking a fight and get things moving again. Okay. Oh, right. He's still not 16, so we're still teaching him. Um, he gains the just trait. I'm good with that. Cool. Wow, so you had a daughter at 15. Okay. I keep forgetting that she's a little bit older than him. All right. Well, then, um... We have the manpower to take somebody out. I just don't know where we can declare war. Like, are you... You're not in charge. You are in charge of the Boltons. Interesting. I So I can declare war on him. Um, I was under the impression the truce is still going. Yeah, another six years. So how much prestige would I lose from that? Hmm. Oh, here we go. It would cost me 845 prestige. So basically two-thirds of my prestige. And everybody would hate me. And I would become a truce breaker. So we may as well wait. One province is not worth all those negatives. And it's not like we won't have other opportunities to get it. We just have to be a little bit patient. Which, uh, definitely not my strong suit, but <laughs> we're going to have to here. So hopefully uh, 
Lord Callan can hang in there. The Imperatus. I wonder how he got that nickname, by the way. I, I don't recall him doing anything to really justify it. Hmm. I'm concerned that he's still stressed, because we've had rulers die from that, and it's entirely possible for him to as well. And so that makes me a bit nervous, because, again, his lineage is less than secure. Right now, she is still our heir. She has a bunch of daughters of her own, but she's not a particularly good character, Neith nor are any of her daughters, really. Actually, Branda? Not bad. Branda the Brave. That would be a cool, like, moniker to add to her name. But she's actually not a bad character for an eight-year-old. I'm going to see if we can't um, educate her ourselves, given that she could end up being our heir down the line. So I'm going to throw that in there, and we're going to try to influence her as best we can, make her the best possible character she can be, and we'll basically groom her for rulership, assuming that she is... Um, eventually going to be the one to take over because he very well might rule until you know she's an adult and we may just pass right over Lady Sybil because the age gap there is not very large he had her at 15 it looks like he's 43 now she's 28 so yeah not a huge gap between father and daughter there uh, I'm going to close all of these because they're never really anything of consequence. Are there any factions in... I always click the wrong button. Is there any factions that might be a threat to us? No, actually. Just the liege loyalist faction. We could also demand a... Elective monarchy. Wait, wait. Lady Paramount Hara... Oh, so Roos is gone. He must have... Yeah, he died. He died a natural death at 58. That's a bit early for a natural death, but not so much during this time period. Or at least, because this is a fantasy setting, the time period that inspires this setting. 58 doesn't seem all that old. So, High Paramount Hara, Lord Paramount Winton, regular marriage... You scored there, pal. So the Boltons are basically going to inherit the High Lordship. You know what? Let's do it. We're going to try to get rid of him before they have any more children. And that will make her single. And I will see if we can't weasel our way into... Hell, I mean, a matrilineal marriage would be awesome, but even if we can't get a matrilineal marriage, a regular marriage would put us in pretty good standing because we would basically be blood relatives with all of the heirs who inherit the the Lord Paramount title. That's pretty cool. So yeah, we're going to try to assassinate him however we can. And um, what do we need to pull this one off? Intrigue needs to be 12. Or a spy master with 18. Neither of which is the case here. Um, we'll auto-invite plotters, and we'll take a look and see who might be able to help us. There's a lot of people that could really, really add to it, but none of them are willing to join. I assumed there'd at least be a few on the fence like her. How much would I need to pay her? 15? That's not bad, actually. She'll join us. That'll get us a little bit closer to 100%. Although we've seen... Oh, that is the bottom. Okay. We've seen how even 200% plot power does not necessarily guarantee uh, success. So that'll put us at 80%, which actually is not that terrible. And then we'll get our spy master, Miles, to build a spy network in the capital. And we'll see if we can't get rid of this guy. Now, I don't know who we would even bother to marry. Interesting. So, the North is at war with the Riverlands. Okay. I don't know who we would marry to her once that, once that opening is there. Um, 
really don't have a lot of options. I'll get some more piety there. Um, keep trying to pause over and over again. Like, I could get rid of my wife, but I wouldn't want to do that. Hmm. How old is she? 38. We really don't have any, any family members who could pull that off. Because our brother is already married. We are already married. Hmm. We could arrange for a divorce. It would cost us some money and some prestige, but it might be worth it. It very well might be worth it. Um, that's something to think about. I assume we're not going to be able to assassinate the guy in this episode, so let me know what you guys think about this idea of maybe arranging a divorce. But even then, I'm not sure that I want to do that. Because if we can't guarantee a matrilineal marriage, I wouldn't want to marry her with the player character. Because I don't stand to really benefit a lot from that. And then potentially any... Any sons that we had, if we had a son with her, would be of the Stark line. And the Starks would take over all of my holdings and we would basically lose. So... I don't think that's a very good idea. Um, she's just. That's good. Good start. She's actually shaping up to be a pretty good character. I wonder what's giving her so much um, martial skill. Because she's a twin, she's brave, so yeah, plus two, and then she's just. But she's got seven, so that other five is coming from somewhere. Apparently her base martial skill is four, so... She's just got a pretty good pre-inclination toward martial skill, I guess. But yeah, this, this works out for us pretty well because she is basically in line to eventually become heir. And so the fact that she's actually not a terrible character is going to benefit us quite a bit. The issue now is trying to find a way to sort of circumvent her mother and not allow her to take the throne because, frankly, she's not very good. Walder Bolton and Arana Raventree, named Sybil. So he's married to my second daughter. And he doesn't really have... It. He's got some decent traits, but nothing that I would assume could be directly inherited. So we have Sybil Raventree, who doesn't seem to have anything yet. But that could change. Hmm. I'm curious, is anybody jumping in on this? I'm going to keep checking every once in a while, because if there's anybody we could pay to join us, I would be happy to do that. But I'm going to assume that uh, it'll probably remain how it it is now for a while. Yeah, I don't see any anybody on the fence. <laughs> well, what to do now? Our military is looking strong as ever. We have five more years on that truce, so I don't think we'll be able to declare war this episode. Although, that's one less year. Oh, as soon as I unpause. Okay, good job. Keep those recruits coming. So it's 83.99. We've got to wait till... Uh... Shoot, I already forgot. What is it? 84.03, I think. So four more years. And, um, I'm almost wondering if I should pull him from here, put him somewhere else, that we would be able, because if we go after Seal Shore, for example, that's going to give us a truce against the Boltons. And so, whether we have the claim on High Point or not, we're going to have to declare war to take one, wait for the truce to run itself out again, and then declare war to take the other. So there's going to be a long gap in between. We already have a claim on Seal Shore, so I figure let's take claim on something else 
if there is even anything else. Like Widow's Watch, for example. We could go after Widow's Watch or one of these islands up here. Actually, no, we can't because they have a new High Lord. I don't know that that was there before. Well, I mean, we still could. We would just have to go to war with these guys rather than a single province. But, uh, yeah, I think that would be more effective time-wise because then we could, you know, have more wars going at once. So I'm going to... Not at once, but in succession. I'm going to pull the Justicar from there and we're going to fabricate a claim on Widow's Watch. We'll take Widow's Watch, give it to somebody who's been nice to us. Then we'll set our sights on Deep Down, I figure. We'll go to war with the High Lordship of Skagos. And, uh... Hopefully, during... It seems that Lady Melora of Cockleswent, the spymaster of Lady Paramount Victoria of the Reach, has been sent to Winterfell to investigate rumors of a plot. Maybe she should be silenced before she finds out about my plot to kill Lord Paramount Winton of the North. The Spider. She is pretty damn good. She is a pretty awesome character all around. Melora Meadows. Hmm. I'm just gonna let it go. I don't think we'd be able to assassinate her anyways. How do we want to educate our daughter Serana? Serena, excuse me. Educated at court. I guess. Um I hate these these values are based on percentages. So the more money you have on you, the more they're going to charge you to do this. I'm going to go with a poor education because honestly, 40 gold seems more than sufficient for an education. 80 gold just seems ridiculous. Especially for a character who's probably not going to have any real significance. She's like our fourth daughter and will never be in any sort of position for succession or anything like that. Hmm, do we want to do patrol posts? I'm thinking yes. Because that will get me closer to guards, stations, whatever. No, that needs modest estates. Is it this one? Yeah, we want that one. So I'll do patrol posts. That'll get us a little bit closer, and eventually we can upgrade this. Uh, Castle Town is going to require Modest Estates 3. So basically, by upgrading this, that'll allow us to upgrade this, which will allow us to upgrade this. At least that's the plan, anyways. And I think there may be a couple of level ups in between there. Like, we might have to level one of those up twice before we get to the proper level. But we're getting closer. Getting closer, that's the important thing. Wow, you guys really took to each other, didn't you? Okay, so he's got another daughter. They've got another daughter. This one named Mira. No traits or anything. At least not yet. Typically, if they're going to inherit like strong or quick or genius, you'll see that immediately. So I'm going to assume that they're not going to have that. Let's check on our intrigue again. So 88% and still nobody else willing to join. But 88's not bad. We've definitely succeeded with less. I'm just hoping that uh I mean, I don't know. It's it's just sort of a shot it's sort of a shot in the dark and it's not really Oh, wow. Lady Paramount Hara of the North has usurped the title Kingdom of the Riverlands from Lord Maynard of the Trident. So she is now Lord Paramount of, or excuse me, Lady Paramount of the North and Queen of the Riverlands, if I'm reading that correctly. Granted, the Riverlands are part of the Kingdom of the Iron Throne. Well, the Riverlands look like they're pretty fractured. Let's see, yeah, there's Kingdom of the Riverlands, but everything east of the river here is not part of it. So you have the High Lordship of Seaguard, 
which is falling under the kingdom of the Riverlands. And it seems like everything to the west is in that kingdom. Everything to the east is actually separate. Interesting. No, I guess Greywater Watch is always part of the north. Never mind. But yeah, she just snatched that claim. So let's see. Yeah, she is now pretty much the most powerful person in Westeros short of him. Very interesting. And so this move that we've been working on stands to gain us even more if we can pull it off. But again, if it's not a matrilineal marriage, or excuse me, if it's not a standard marriage, then uh, then you know we're not going to really benefit from it because a matrilineal marriage would mean that all of our children with her are Starks, which means that if we had a son, again, he would inherit all of our holdings and all of our holdings would then be held by Starks and not Raven Trees, and that would be essentially game over. Um, it wouldn't literally be game over because there's enough Raven Trees for us to swap over to another character somewhere. But because um, we would take such a huge hit in uh, power, I would probably just call that game and move on. So our daughter is now 16 and we will find her somebody to marry. Um, let's see. So we have a knight, Sir John of Lands Point. He's a pretty good character. No, he's really not, actually. But he is quick. It says a lot, like, if you start with quick and the best you can do dip diplomatically is six, like, you're not a very good character. <laughs> Because you got like a three point head start on everybody. Hmm. He's a good character, he's just too old. 64, yeah, they aren't. Actually, that's not, necess not necessarily true because as far as the code is concerned, women get cut off at either 40 or 45 regarding having children, but I don't think there's any cap for men. I think it just, the age slowly diminishes their fertility rating, but it never caps it completely so she could potentially have um, children with somebody that old but let's find somebody younger yeah this guy's a pretty good character actually Alessander he's the Justicar of Felwood is there any matrilineal options like any good ones uh, Janos he's a bit old but he is a good character and he's been pretty loyal to us you know what let's do that So we'll bring him into our family, essentially. And uh, he is, again, older than her, but because there's no hard cap on fertility for men, I think it'll be fine. He's not got the best traits, though, so we'll need to... Well, honestly, they're far enough down the line where I don't think it matters how good their children are. But, um... Interesting. Serana Raven Tree. Oh, she's. I thought that was our daughter. Yeah, wrong, wrong one. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, then it matters even less. But at least we finally found a matrilineal marriage for him that didn't involve him leaving us because he is a very good character. And he is our Justicar, so he's important. Um, you know, we want to keep him around. So, Branda is a liar. Let's check our options out here. She gains the deceitful trait. Um, that'll give her three to intrigue, but she'll lose two diplomacy. If we uh, give her the birch, she has a 40% chance of losing the deceitful trait and a 10% chance of gaining the wrath trait. If we talk to her about honesty, there's a 50% chance she'll gain honest, a 40% chance she'll lose deceitful, and a 10% chance of no effect. Um, what is her current stat line? 
So this is taking into account the plus three and the minus two. So her intrigue right now would be three and her diplomacy would be two. I would much rather her have the diplomacy to be honest. So let's talk to her about honesty. So she's gonna gain that and now she'll be five diplomacy and one intrigue. Because honestly, it's easier to have a character take over your kingdom who has good intrigue or excuse me, good diplomacy and work on their intrigue rather than the other way around, I find. Because if they have really bad diplomacy, they're going to be handicapped as far as rulership is concerned. You can get by with a ruler that doesn't have very good intrigue. And if you're role playing as like an upright and honorable uh, ruler, then that becomes even less important. We haven't really done that. We've been kind of doing whatever we need to do to advance our station. But um, even, it, even if you have to train up a skill, for example, so like if it's below 8, we can get it up beyond 8. But once you do that and you pass 8, you're stuck there. So you might get 8, you might get 9, but you're kind of capped wherever you advance that to. Whereas if you start off with like 10, 12 diplomacy, and your intrigue is like six. You can keep leveling that up until you get up to eight or nine. So uh, I'd rather have it high here and work on this than high here and work on that, basically, is what I'm saying. At least for somebody who's eventually going to be the player character. For anybody else, I just kind of put them where they'd fit best. So during his visit to my court, the Justicar of the North, Master Donald of Whitegate, has really convinced me of what a benevolent and peaceful ruler his liege, Lady Paramount Har of the North, is. Okay, so. He's trying to sway me to like her more. Um, let's go ahead and give our daughter an educator. Or, you know what? I, I do like the idea of her mother doing it. So let's just keep that there. And she's actually not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, actually, you know what? Am I educating a bunch of people? No. So I'm, I'm going to teach her myself, actually, because we have space, and that gives me more control over the traits she ultimately gets, although her mother is just as good a character as we are. Uh, I mean, technically, we're a little bit more balanced, although she does have a couple higher skills than we do, but we're definitely a little bit more even across the board. But this way, I can actually decide on the traits that she picks up, and she's actually got a pretty good starting baseline for a six-year-old so we'll see if we can't turn her, her into somebody who can actually contribute to the lordship but i believe we're out of time for the day so i'm going to end it here as always thank you guys so much for watching had a great time playing some crusader kings 2 with you and i look forward to seeing you back here for the next episode